I'm installing some vinyl plank flooring in this room and I'm ready to run into the closet. But I want the vinyl to be underneath this closet door track. So obviously I need to take up the track. And before I do that, I want to mark the location of the track on the wall. I can't mark it on the floor because the vinyl will cover whatever mark I make. And since my track doesn't quite hit the wall, I'm going to use this putty knife to transfer the mark over. that on both sides and on both ends of the track. Now I need to carefully take up the track and I say carefully because this track is, uh, is aluminum and the aluminum is nailed to the concrete so I want to make sure that I don't damage the track. I can easily damage the track with a you know steel prying tools on the concrete. So I'm going to pull that up, pull up these tack strips, patch all these little holes. There'll be some more where the tack strips are nailed down and clean, clean all this up. And I'm going to put just the next piece of the vinyl in, the next row, the part that the track is going to be sitting on top of. And then I'll be back to actually install the track on top of the vinyl. All right, before I put this track down, I want to prepare it. And the first thing is, it's been down there for a long time, so it's so there's a lot of uh, oxidation scratches. It's really dirty. There's a bunch of junk stuck to the inside. I have to kind of scrape it and vacuum it. And I'm going to use uh, this sanding sponge like this. Works really well on the aluminum. This one is a 180 grit extra fine sanding sponge, and with not too much effort. You know, you can clean that up real nice. Get a nice kind of a brushed finish on it. So I do that over the whole thing. Uh, do it on the inside and then vacuum whatever comes off out of there. The other thing I need to do is drill the mounting holes. And this one was nailed down. Uh, and I'm going to put it back down with these uh, Tapcons blue concrete screws. And I'm going to use the same hole. In this case, it'll work fine. I, this, it's, the screw is bigger than the nail was, and I patch the holes and whatever. It's going to work fine to use the same hole. I'll just drill these out slightly bigger than the, than the screw I'm using. You'll have to decide for yourself if you can use the same hole or if you need to move it over and drill a new hole, depending on what your substrate is and what the condition of it is around the, the original hole. I do recommend using a screw over a nail because you can control how much pressure you're putting on the floor. And with this kind of floor, it's important to let the floor uh, float underneath the track here because if you don't, uh, it, it may buckle when it expands and contracts. So a screw will let us put sort of just enough pressure to hold the track down without having to you know, really trap the floor to the between the, the track and the, the floor and the subfloor underneath. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up, get the mounting holes drilled, and then we'll head back to the floor to actually get it installed. Now I'm ready to install this track. The first thing I'm gonna do is just line it up with the marks I made on the wall before I took it out. Do that on both ends. Also make sure if you have any mechanism like this that's adjustable to mount the door on that you have that in the track before you mount it because otherwise you'll have to take it out and put it and put the thing in and put the track back down not that I've done that before or anything like that now I'm going to mark the holes where I'm going to put the screws I'm just using this fine point sharpie and I'm also going to put a little mark outside the track in line with these holes because I need to enlarge the hole in the in the vinyl to give some clearance around the screw in case that vinyl needs to move around. So I'm going to make a mark where the where the the boundaries of the track are, so that I can make sure when I enlarge the hole, I don't go outside the track boundary. I'm going to do that with, with all three of my mounting holes. And if you get some of this, if you get some of this marker on the floor and you want to clean it off, just alcohol takes it off.
All right, now that I have my mounting holes marked, I'm gonna take the, the drill that I'm gonna to use to go into the, the concrete, and I'm just going to drill through that where that mark is just so I, so I make a mark on the floor underneath. And as soon as I start digging into the concrete, I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna pull this vinyl out because it's just gonna pile the, the junk from the, the drilling the hole up underneath the vinyl. So no point in piling it all up under there. I just need a mark. I'll pull the vinyl out, drill the hole, and then put it back in. So I'll do that for all three mounting holes. Okay, now I have my three holes drilled through the vinyl. And so I'll pull these, these pieces up, these pieces that the track is going to sit on. And finish drilling those holes for the screws. And then also here in the, in the vinyl, I'm going to enlarge this hole can't quite see there's my marks for the uh, where the track is so I'm going to sort of drill the biggest hole I can drill while staying inside the the marks for the track see if I drilled that hole with the vinyl in place all that junk would have been piled up under the vinyl so now I have my holes drilled into the concrete and I also have the oversized holes drilled into the vinyl, making sure to size them so that they'd land underneath the track by looking at my marks I had made to show the track boundaries. The next step here is to install the next row of vinyl. That's those pieces with the holes that the track will be sitting on. Now nearing the end here, all that's left is to put the track in place, line it up and drive the screws. As I mentioned earlier in the video, make sure you have any hardware that needs to be captured in the track, installed into the track before you drive your screws so you don't have to take it up and put it in later. I'm going to drive the screws with a hand-powered tool for two reasons. One, I don't want to put too much pressure down onto the track that will keep the floor, the vinyl, from moving underneath. The other reason is I don't want to deform the, the aluminum of the track down into that hole by putting too much uh, downward force on the screw. I'm going to drive it here with a hand-powered tool, and I'm going to drive it just tight enough that it'll, it'll keep the track from moving, but no tighter than that. So I have the screw tightened down now, and I'm going to back it off a little bit to try to find the perfect spot. I want it just tight enough so that it doesn't move around and, and no tighter than that. And that's the closet door track installed on top of the vinyl plank flooring. So I hope you found this video helpful.